It's October 7th. And the first thing we will do is have uh, our invocation by Minister Chevy Bess from the Burning Bush Baptist Church of Jesus Christ. If you'll all rise, please. <coughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you on tonight, O oh Lord, thanking you for the opportunity to make our petitions and requests known to you. Father, I pray that you will be with us in this meeting, that you will watch over us and give us your insight, your wisdom, and your direction, and that we would follow in that, Lord. I pray for your peace and all of your insight. Watch over the upcoming debates, oh Father. Watch over these upcoming elections, oh God. And I pray on tonight, Father, that all will be done decent and in order, and that we will forever walk in your words and your wisdom, and that in all things that we do, Father, that we will in you trust. Trust in you, Father. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity and be with us in this meeting. It is in the name of Jesus that I do pray. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay, we will now open the public comment section. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a presentation. That won't be the first boo boo I'll make tonight. This time, uh, we kind of, as we, in our zeal for uh, rewarding and looking uh, to the future all the time, we sometimes forget the past and a starting point. And one of them is uh, the Hispanic Chamber. Uh, even though they started back in 1991, the fact is it was only until the last eight years or so, and specifically uh, when Councilman uh, Cabrillas and his wife uh, Vicky began to really take charge of the Hispanic uh, Chamber and really put some uh, fire under it. Uh, in the last eight years, uh, they've grown from a membership of about 30 to 290, over, exceeding 300 uh, just recently here. Uh, just in the last couple of years, the Edison awarded the uh, Nonprofit of the Year Award to the Hispanic Chamber. And in this year, uh, we got the award for, Rudy would understand this even better than I, how many Hispanic Chambers there are out in the state, but we've got the award for the, the best Hispanic Chamber in the entire state of California. Uh, this is an incredible uh, uh, growth opportunity. This is why this city gets behind our changes so much, and we all benefit so greatly from this. Uh, the small businesses, that environment especially comes out of our chambers. With that, uh, Councilman Cabriellis, uh, Victor would like to honor you. Well, uh, Vicky. I would like to have you come up here. Actually, I'm just a gopher. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have to mention that when I got involved, it was just barely hanging on. But when we had Mr. Gabriales take it on as his own, his leadership that he had gleaned from being the fire chief and implementing programs and building, that's when it took off. So it has been a joint venture along with the volunteers, the board of directors we've had. But I honestly have to say, if he hadn't have come and joined us, I don't know that we'd be State Hispanic Chamber of the Year. So I want to say thank you for helping me um, grow what is very precious to me. And I love your leadership.
Thank you. You know, just do a little add-on to this thing, not only the Hispanic Chamber, but all three of our chambers here uh, have done awesome well in spite of the economy. And, you know, sometimes California and the rest of the country, uh, they're doing their own thing. But out here, uh, we all work together, we grow together, and this economy is going to bounce out of this a lot faster than the rest simply because of the work of our three chambers. So thank you very much. The bailout is it's going to sit somewhat, but the... Uh, the economy will recover because of our local businesses working hard, sticking together, networking, working with the chambers, and doing business with each other. That's what's going to get us through this mess. And it will. We've done it before, and we're going to do it again. Thank you. Okay, with that, um, congratulations. <clears throat> we will open up uh, our public comments for all the entities, which is the library, the SCLA, SCLRA, SCLA, the RDA, and the Water District, and then we will go on to our City Council agenda. So I'm opening the public comment for all those entities, and I'm taking the cards as they are given to us, and the first one is um, Melvin Milton. <coughs> Yeah, um, my name is Mel Melton. I'm a new resident in Victorville, so everything looks like it's been this way forever for me. Uh, we moved here just a year ago, got kicked in the pants with a upside-down housing. Now the water department seems to want to kick us again. And I know that I'm not alone. And I, I'm just wondering if the city council and the water department is going to buy a lot of chainsaws to help people cut down the trees and stuff in their yard as they die off when they can't afford to water them. I'm wondering if the city council is going to shut the fountain off in the front over there that's wasting water. I wonder if the city council is going to uh, turn the water off on all of its parks, its beautification around the uh, city hall and other places. I'm wondering why the, the um, water department allowed water to run down the street for months at a time out of the same uh, water storage tank. I understand there was some sort of pollution in it, but nothing that couldn't have been diluted. I'm wondering why the city council is not uh, investigating ways to recycle water. In the city I came from of Walnut, uh, we have um, purple lines running all over the city. We use reclaimed water, and we do it for a good reason. It's because Cal Poly Pomona, my alma mater, um, it proved that we could re recondition all the sewer water and reuse it again. So right now I see a, a water department that's just going along with the old trend of raised prices and stuff, and I'm wondering if they're going to be able to reduce the rates if the emergence, uh, present water shortage crisis comes to an end, or is this just an aspiring up, up, up uh, situation? Thank you, people. I appreciate your time. Thank Mrs. Allman, if I might, normally I don't, I don't respond, normally I don't respond to comments, but just since you're new here to town, just so you know, a couple years ago we did pass an ordinance which all developers now have to put purple pipe in the ground in their developments for recycled water, reclaimed water. Uh, two years ago we also passed an ordinance where all the new development could not put grass in the front yard. They have to put zero scape, which is rocks and, and plants and stuff like that. So we are, we have moved on with that, and we do have ordinance for that. So you're, since you're new, you don't, you didn't probably weren't here when those were passed. So they do have to start using purple pipe. We are using recycled water, even more and more places. Uh, a lot of the stuff running down the road you see is from homes, which are watering the yards incorrectly, which we're working on. So we are working on a lot of those things currently. Well, my home doesn't have a 200,000 gallon water tank and back that's, that's overflowing into the street. Um, I think that one did belong to the water department because mm -hmm. it was painted the right color and everything and it said water department on it right. or some such thing as that. And your uh, front yards that are rock usually are ground that is covered with um, uh, plastic first mm -hmm. and consequently there is no uh, water being absorbed. The water is running down the creek behind my house. We see it all the time. And uh, that apparently the rest of the desert is going to be covered in plastic and we're going to lose all that water. 
Just wanted to let you know. Thank you. I, I neglected, no, thank you very much. I neglected to say that we will limit your comments to three minutes on the public comments and any other comments. May, may I protest? <coughs> Alwyn, it appears that Mr. Milton's comments actually pertain to item three on the water district, yes. which is a public hearing on the water rate, and so those comments would be incorporated into that public hearing. And Thank my you. understanding is that that's going to be opened and then continued to a yes. later date. It will be continued until 11-18. Um, 11-18. The next card I have is um, Lisa uh, Vandergrift. Vandergrift. I'm killing. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm getting over bronchitis, so if I cough, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to take up my three minutes coughing. Um, first, as a neighborhood watch member, I would like to thank the council for having this forum so that we can talk about our neighborhood safety issues. The neighborhood watch of Cherry Brook would also like to thank you for your continued support of gang task force, Section 8 housing compliance, and graffiti busters. Those services are valued and we very much appreciate them. However, Cherry Brook has recently formed a neighborhood watch. There are 21 active households in this neighborhood watch. There are 17 additional houses that have dead or dying landscape. There are renters that are suspect at best. There are absent landlords. And we're frustrated. We're frustrated that the homes that we bought have declined in value due to no control of our own. And in addition to that, we can't even enjoy our neighborhoods because we're being panhandled for money, alcohol, toilet paper. I mean, there's all kinds of things. There's little kids breaking into empty abandoned houses. And we need help. We need law enforcement to patrol more, which they are present, but of course we'd like them to be more present. We understand that there's pressing issues in the city and that crime is number one on the council's mind and it's number one in our mind as well. But we really, we're being diligent and we're being proactive in our neighborhood and we would like the support and the backup that we deserve and that we're entitled to. We paid, I don't even, I pay nearly $6,000 a year in taxes in Melrose for landscaping that doesn't happen. I got a letter from the city that said they can't afford to do it anymore. Um, okay, I still have to pay my taxes on my Melrose. I'd like to sit on my front porch. I'd like for my son to have the scooter that was stole from him. I'd like to be able to go get my mail without a gang of kids loitering near the mailbox drinking 40 ounces of beer at a time. So if we could please plead with the council to support our neighborhood watch by increasing law enforcement patrol, code enforcement, even if you have to write us up for something that we're doing, if we have water runoff or whatever, we'll take that hit as long as we have more presence in the neighborhood. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the next card we have is Catherine Scary. <coughs> He's outside with the baby. I'll hold it off for a while. I'll put it to the side for a little bit. Um, the next one, <laughs> I'm a mother, I understand. The next one is uh, Sharon. Oh, Sharon, help me with your last name. Manif yes, thank you. My name is Sharon Manifiega. I want to thank you for the opportunity. My reason for being here is as follow. Matthew, four years old. Jonathan, five. Alana, 8, Ariana, 12, and Angel, 14. I, too, am part of the Cherry Brook Neighborhood Watch and recently have been blessed with these children in my home. My concern is, why is this a concern to you? When I had bought my home in, in Cherry Brook a few years ago, I bought it because, as a simple fact, Victorville was an awesome place, and I was sold in it to come and raise a family. I have since brought my family in a few days ago and I too have the same problem in the neighborhood with foreclosed homes, children running around unsupervised, and people hanging out of my house late night when it's time to go to bed. Unfortunately, why should this be a concern to me? As a recently new mother, it gives me and arises to me the concern of, of crime and things that could happen to the young children that I recently have in, in my home. I'd like to be able to have my kids run around and be able to 
hang out in Victorville and my street and Cherry Brook like I had once a few years ago. I too am asking for the same thing. Um, if we could just have more presence of police in our neighborhood, there's some things that need to be tended. The vacant homes in our, in our neighborhood have the tendency of having unwanted kids and people from other neighborhoods that I too fear that I don't want to be standing here in a few years and to, to name out my kids as a statistic because of something that may have happened to them because I wasn't proactive enough in being participating in what I think we need in my neighborhood. Um, we have recently started our neighborhood watch group and we too are concerned. As a mother, I am concerned that my kids will be able to grow up where I chose. And I was sold on Victorville because it was a place to raise my family. I'm hoping that my kids will be able to, to come outside and do the same thing and not for me to move to another city because I've done that too many times already. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the next card is Raul, Ma Raul Martinez. Good evening. Uh, I'm also here with the, with the Cherry Brook Neighborhood Watch Group. Uh, I've been living in the city of Victorville for over three years now um, with my wife and four kids. In 2005, when we just moved in, we were very happy with our neighbors and very proud of our house. Um, I felt like this was the perfect place to put some roots down and I could picture myself and my family being here for a very long time. Uh, in the last year or so, it has become very obvious that things have changed. I am now living in between two vacant houses and many of my original neighbors are renting their homes out and I no longer feel like it is a safe place uh, to let my kids be outside. I now have new neighbors that feel that it is okay to blatantly smoke pot in their front yard and driveway. Uh, some of the children belonging to these new neighbors are always out in the streets of all, uh, at all hours of the day and sometimes late into the night. These children also have the habit of throwing small rocks that, that are found in their front yard at people's cars. It has become the norm to regularly find rocks around my car, my driveway, on my sidewalk, in front of my house. Um, it's gotten so bad that, that I'm, I'm worried whenever people come over to visit me that something is going to happen to their cars or they're going to be vandalized. So it has be now become rare that I ever invite friends and family over to my house because uh, uh, the it's kind of embarrassing where I live now with the because the people that are the problem in the neighborhood are just a couple of houses down from me. So I just I just feel bad if anybody came over and their cars were vandalized. Uh, I think we need police to patrol our neighborhood on a more regular basis. Uh, something has to be done to the owners that rent the homes to these lousy tenants. The homeowners, I feel, should be held accountable for using bad judgment in the people that they rent their house to. I believe that you folks can help us out and uh, try to make this place a, a pleasant place to live in. So now that we've done our part and created our neighborhood watch, uh, and thanks to Doug's story for, for getting it together, we're just asking you to please help us and do what you can to make our neighborhood a nice place to live in like it once was. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dario Batten. Yes. I, I massacred your name. Daryl. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here tonight about the water rate increase. Excuse me. Excuse I don't, me. Um, you're, you want to speak on the water? Yes. Okay. We're just having right now public comment on things that are not on the agenda. Not on the agenda. Can I just put your card in with the water? Yes, I think so. That's where it was intended. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, next one is Valerie Sexton. ladies and gentlemen. I presume that so anything that's on the agenda we're not going to talk about today. Okay. I'd like to talk about your beautiful golf club. Okay. 
Um, I personally like to know how much money it is taking the ta of taxpayers' money to, quote, maintain the grounds, the building, the water, okay, the groundskeepers for a handful of people that use the golf course in the course of a day, a week, a month. My husband and I go through there different times of the day. If I've seen four carts at one time, that's a lot. What I would like to recommend, Victorville is looking to put a youth center someplace where our children can go. Why not incorporate that into the golf club? Timeshare it. And who knows, you may have a new generation of golf players. Thank you. Okay, Valerie, I have you here. Did you fill out two cards? One was on public comment, and what was the other one, for him? Oh, no water. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, I'm going to put you up here and hold you up on top then, okay? Um, now, is Catherine back? No, she's out there with the baby yet. Oh, here she You want to speak for her? Oh, here she comes. Okay, we're going to let her speak real quick. I'm Catherine Story. Um, I'm a registered nurse. I work at St. Mary's. I'm here with the um, Neighborhood Watch Group, and uh, basically we're just trying to set a precedence in our neighborhood that um, crime will not be tolerated and it will be a safe neighborhood, and we would like your help with that. We would like the police to continue um, patrolling, increase patrols, um, and we would really like the um, vacant homes to... <laughs> to be um, boarded up um, so that uh, no activity could go on in those homes and it would be safe. Um, we'd also like for the, um, the homeowners that are renting the house to have increased accountability um, for who they are renting to and for um, the amount of calls that we've had to make um, for law enforcement, for code enforcement to come out to these homes. We would like the um, homeowners to be responsible. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, I have another card. This is the last card I have for public comment. Robert uh, Bithorn. Good evening, uh, Mayor and City Council. Uh, I wanted to uh, add uh, something to this uh, meeting on the Section 8s that are out there. A lot of, uh, it seems to be that there's been a lot of residents, a lot of these houses, and uh, they're being rented out to Section 8. Things aren't looking too good on that. No? And Everybody in the neighborhood, you know, they uh, take care of their uh, their landscape and everything like that. And then when you get a lot of people come in and rent through Section 8, they seem to not care. And I think we have a lot of problems with that. That's all I have to say. And thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Stewart, yes. Thank you, City Council and Mayor, for uh, for listening to us. And uh, I am uh, again with the Cherry Brook Lane Neighborhood Watch, and and uh, we have uh, come before you tonight and explained some of our concerns in the neighborhood and some of the things that that we would like. And uh, not to reiterate the problems with vacant homes, um, a couple of the specifics on those pictures that you're looking at right now is two two. Uh, foreclosed homes that have uh, that have gone under, and then there's another one that you see the front door wide open and. When the family literally left the house behind, they just 
left it unlocked, and now it's a it's a cool hangout for uh, for kids in the neighborhood, uh, but it's not cool for us because they're doing unsafe things in there, and 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 it's attracting criminal activity, and uh, we want to stop to those things, and um, we were really uh, hoping that you guys can partner with us, and we've done our part in starting the neighborhood watch and being as proactive as we can, and knowing the resources and the uh, authority that you guys hold, we petition to you now to do something on behalf of of this neighborhood that was once a great place for our little kids, and. Uh, now that I have a, a little tiny guy who's going to be riding his bike soon, um, I want to get him that bike in a couple of years. And uh, I don't want him to just be contained to the living room for my living room's sake. Um, but uh, we want to see things like maybe an area task force with our police where they are strategic and uh, about certain communities. Or maybe we're meeting at elementary schools in our neighborhood and, and they tell us what's going on in, uh, in the neighborhood. And they say, what are some of the concerns? What do we need to be work at? What do we need to be looking out for? What do we need to uh, be aware of? Um, and also, uh, we've had some great success with uh, the uh, code enforcement, but um, I know uh, in coming in today and meeting with some of them today, uh, you guys can take liens against uh, these houses, and uh, we want you to do that. We want you to penalize the people uh, who left these things, and if it's the bank, then have them pay you guys back to board it up to uh, come out and uh, fix the yards and keep things going. And uh, we want you to use the things that you guys have already um, proactively put into place, but uh, use that authority that you guys have. and. Um, and, and another thing that we wanted to see is uh, is maybe some more free activities for some of our teens through the Recreation Department. I know there's a lot of great things that the Recreation Department does, but uh, a lot of those things cost money. And uh, with a lot of things happening right now and, and the uh, Section 8 and uh, different individuals that are that are needing things to do, pro proactive in the, in the afternoons and the evenings, there's just not money to go to those things. And maybe it's a teen center, maybe it's a YMCA, maybe it's a youth center, maybe it's nine holes less on a golf course. I don't know what that is, but uh, we would like to see those type of things so that we can encourage our neighbors, hey, here's a great place where your kids can hang out, and it's not a vacant house where you're busting out all the windows and, and jumping off the, the stairs. And, your and, time uh, is almost up, Mr. Story. Thank you. I just uh, do appreciate the things you guys are doing, and, and I know it's uh, crime and uh, a safe community is very high on your guys' radar and uh, we would ask you to keep that up thank you very much just so you all from Cherry Brook know the police chief of our police department is here tonight and a department head from code enforcement is here and they're all hearing what you're saying cool. and we will address all those issues obviously we can't address things in I know public but comment but we're hearing what you're saying so cool. we'll let you know thank you very much uh, there's one other but idea that Oh, yeah. One more. No, that's I just okay. going to mention while our code enforcement's here, too, that maybe we could set up a hotline on the, um, the abandoned home issues where we can, if somebody calls into that number, we can kick it back out to the proper agencies, whether it's the real estate um, uh, holding the property management team or whether it's uh, a government agency. Section 8 is federal government, but there is also there's a state agency in the housing that's part of that loop of maintaining the quality of the houses while they're transitioning from owners to vacant. I have an, uh, one next door that's been vacant for a year. Uh, on matter of fact, I stick my hose over the fence and water some of their major plants so they don't die. <laughs> but uh, uh, we maybe a hotline or something else. So uh, code enforcement, stick that on your notes there except for tonight to see what we can do about that as well. Okay. Um, we can't comment normally on public comment, but I think you've got the idea. We're all behind you. With that, we will continue on with our agenda. I know some of you have sending cards, but we will wait till we get to that particular item. <clears throat> the first item, uh, we'll turn it over to Mr. Hunter for the library. Thank you, Mrs. Allman. And I like you, I had that same thing, so I'll probably start coughing Talk here shortly. If you need it. Okay, the public library, uh, any revisions to the agenda? No revisions. No revisions, very good. All right, we have the consent calendar, which is item number three, which is the uh, uh, minutes for the regular meeting of August 5th and August 19th. And we have the library staff report. Move approval of the uh, consent calendar. We have a second. Second. Okay. And we vote. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs. Allman. That's all on the uh, library agenda. Okay, thank you. And then we will be moving on to the Southern California Logistic Rail Authority agenda. Um, any revisions? There are no revisions. 
no revisions. And with that, we will move on to the consent calendar. Uh, do we have a Approval. motion? Oh, I forget. Second. May we vote? Okay, with that, we'll move on to this, <coughs> excuse me, Southern California Logistic Airport Authority. Any revisions to that agenda? There are no revisions. Okay, with that, we will move on to item number three, which is the consent calendar. For approval. May we vote? Okay, and then we will <coughs> go to... Um, the written, written communications uh, request to adopt uh, resolution number SCLAA 08-013. Madam. Uh, Second. Mayor Pro Tem, there is a companion item. If you'd like to handle these both at the same time, it is the okay. companion item is on the city council agenda as item number 14, and it would be appropriate if you so desire to handle both simultaneously. Okay, we will do that. We will take care of this one and item 14 on the city council agenda. We have a first and a second. And carries. Okay, um, we will move on to the Victor Valley Redevelopment Agency agenda. Any revisions to our agenda? There is a request to remove closed session item number seven. Okay, thank you. And then we will move on to um, number three, consent calendar. Move for the item. Second. We have a first and a second. May we vote? Mr. Rothschild? Oh, I don't know. What? Got away from me. I think I got ahead of you, Mike. I, I didn't get a chance to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Are you reading a paper? Can we try it again? Quick enough for you. <laughs> I vote aye for the record. Okay. Thank you. And then we will move on to... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, B, um, approve the advertising agreement by and between. Oh, that was on the consent calendar. That's oh. correct. Okay, see, I told you I'd goof up. Then we'll move on to written communications. Number four, request to adopt resolution number R08012. Move for approval. Second. <laughs> May we vote? Motion carries. Um, number five, request to approve statutory pass-through payments to the project areas taxing and titles number two in the amount of $323,976.04. Move the item. Second. All of our bond, just as a general information, all of our bonding that we go through, a lot of it has, you don't ever hear about, you hear Victorville going to bond, but the school districts, the water districts, and everybody else out there gets a piece of the action too. We're just kind of passing it through. So there's there's something in there. For, on their agendas, you'll see the same action, but it's not as the total package. It's each of us get our prorated pro share of that. Okay. And number five is also a pass-through, a payments through, um, no, that was number five. We had a motion. We need a second. No, you we, voted on that. I we did vote. No. Oh, it's still up on the screen. Okay, number six is request uh, uh, pass-through payments um, for $189,400.57 and in an old and midtown redevelopment. We have a motion and okay. With that, that concludes concludes our RDA agenda. Next, we will go to the Victor Valley Water District. I would like to just make an announcement. Uh, is that um, we? This is a public hearing. I will open the public hearing on this item and take your testimony. Unless you would like to go ahead and wait, it will be continued to November 18 at, at the City Council uh, meeting of that night. Uh, but we will open the public hearing and take testimony if you wish to give it tonight, if you wish to hold off and give it that night. But we will be putting your testimony on record. 
Okay, um, I will, there is no revisions to this agenda other than that, right, Carolee? That's correct, no revisions. Okay. So we will move on to item number three, which is the public hearing uh, to hear arguments for or against the adoption of resolution number VWD08013. And this is for the water race for the water service. I will go ahead and start. Um, let me move this over. I have. Alternate tab. Uh, Nana Carloni. Oh, for the council agenda. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. I'm ready for me. Okay. Now I got it. Okay, we are now for the Victor Valley Water District. Charles um, Kalarini, Carlini. Good evening, council members. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to voice my opinion. Uh, I feel with the today's economy, I don't think any rate increases for the water district are appropriate. Uh, we've been a resident of the high desert, specifically Victorville since 1964. And uh, I know quite a few of you, fire department, whatever. And uh, times are too tight. We, we have a, a rental in Victorville. It's the only one that has any lawn. And uh, if you want the town to look like a ghost town, you just take a ride to Apple Valley and you'll see what a increased rate will do. And people neglect their vegetation. They don't want to go to Xeroscape because that costs them money. And uh, the only thing I can say is uh, I'm against any rate increases. You could possibly give them a rate increase when they first establish service, but to increase the amount that they're going to pay to, to drink and bathe, I think it's absurd. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next one is Robert uh, Bithorn. You know, um, let me search my uh, memory on this. We had a meeting on this was about a month ago. We discussed um, this issue. Was it a month ago, three weeks ago? There was a meeting probably about a month ago to set the public hearing. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, any, hearing. Anyhow, I addressed the council and I asked the council um, if they were going to make allowances for uh, senior citizens and uh, the disabled and other people who are retired out here in the city. You know, 26% is, is a steep increase. People don't even get a 26% increase in their uh, wages. So I was just, you know, asking again if you can make allowances for the uh, senior citizens and the disabled. Thank you. Our next card is um, Richard Gleason. <clears throat> Hello. Thank you guys for letting me have my three minutes. Um, I just, like, like uh, they've mentioned already, the economy is, is tanking right now. I know I'm doing all I can to, to raise my three girls uh, and, and get by financially. Uh, increasing any fees in the city is just going to push people away. There's cheaper places to live, you know. That used to be our draw, is, is a pretty cheap place to live. But if you're going to raise all of our fees like you're doing, it's, it's not going to have the same appeal. Um, you can get your money that you need, maybe by cutting out of the, the power plants or um, maybe not spending so much on the golf course. But it would probably be a real big way to save some money. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next card I have is from Gary Douglas. <clears throat> Council.
council members, city staff, thank you for your time in this three minutes. My concern is, uh, first and foremost, uh, when I came to this body three, six weeks ago, I heard about this increase, 26.9% increase. The city manager discussed that this was a court litigation where we had to pay for makeup water obligation to the MWA. I've done a lot of research, and I don't find that this is fitting the MWA picture. I'm really concerned. Um, and it is, in my opinion, that this is misleading information to the city of Victorville. 29% is unacceptable. Excuse me, 27% is un unacceptable across the board. Considering the makeup water obligation of all the water is about 30%. If you take the multiplication of 27% and you multiply it by the 30% that it actually applies, it wouldn't come out to your $12.40 per person. My dilemma is this is very complicated stuff, and I'm not sure that even we all understand exactly what this money is for. I'm concerned as well when I read in newspapers that our city manager made statements that we can do more projects by increasing utilities in Victorville. And what have we seen since I've read this in the paper? The water has increased, proposed. The trash has increased, proposed. The sewer has increased, proposed. We have a half a billion dollar budget in our city, zero in reserves. We have major issues. Our economy is crashing. We need your help, folks. We need you to pay attention to us citizens out here. If we're gone, there is no revenue. Thank you. Thank you. Our next card is Mr. Bob Carter. Thank you. My name is Bob Carter. I'm probably, I've lived here for 50 years <laughs> and uh, won't believe it in the same house. And I've always been behind the water company 100%. But I'll tell you, this last year has been chaos. Here they're asking for more money and they don't even have the staff. We haven't had bills in three months. They don't have the know-how to, to manage what they did do. How they, but, uh, Already in my neighborhood, the yards are all going to pot. It's going to be look like another downtown Victorville in a few years if that's, you know, everybody quits using the water. You know, I have grandkids that come to visit once in a while, and it's real nice to have a little bit of glass, grass to uh, play on. But I'm thoroughly against the water, and I'll do everything I can to fight it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next card is Mr. Ted Crocker. Thank you. Same thing in the water issue. Uh, when I go down here to pay my water bill, I pay with credit card. <clears throat> it takes them 15 minutes. It used to be they'd take all the bills, add them together, take the credit card, and cash it. Now they have to take each bill at a time, use the credit card one at a time, so it takes me like 15 minutes to get out of there. Now, I don't know why with the modernization of all our computers and everything, or if you guys haven't got up to par with it or what, so I'm very upset about that. Second thing, I'm still waiting for a bill for Palmdale Road Brewside. This has gone three months now. I have nine water bills. I've given nine letters to this whole effect that says no on a water rate increase. Cut and dried simple. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next card is Mr. Frank Sexton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I'm both a senior and a disabled veteran. So I come in on both counts. You guys have been raising rates around here like there's no tomorrow. Unfortunately, last year, all I got was a 2.3% pay raise. That's it. I see a lot of gray hair on this board, and I got news for you folks. It's going to be pretty doggone soon, and you're going to be in the same boat I'm in. And I don't care. You might think you have an excellent, outstanding retirement program. It ain't working that way, not in today's economy. But the, like the like old saying goes, the best laid plans of mice and men, sooner or later you guys are going to be standing on this side of the podium and speaking the same thing I'm speaking about. You've got to do something about this water rate. Two, three percent, that's plausible. 
You guys turned around not the other day and uh, allowed a water uh, soda plant in here. I'm sorry, at that point in time, you guys lost any credibility. You have none left. And this city is totally disgusted with it. They think it's about time you got off your tushes and did something. Do something to save these citizens here money. We represent, the seniors in this town represented a large segment of this population. And we don't have the money to keep paying these bills. So you guys are going to have to start doing something about it. And I suggest that you start off by starting out with something along the lines of, say, a, a senior advisory committee. Because everything you people do affects seniors one way or another. And financially, it hurts. I live on a very limited income. And I've only got some weeks, months, I only have pennies to go by. And now you're going to hit me with a 28% pay raise? I mean, a 28% increase on water? Uh-uh. I've got no choice. I mean, the Midwest is looking awfully good at this point in time. And when I go, I got news for you. There's going to be a hell of a lot more just like me that are going to be pulling out of here. And then you're going to sit here with the city council hall with nobody here except you folks and a bunch of dumb spiders. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Norman Nichols. Norman Nichols, 10655 Goss Road, members of the City Council. You should have in front of you two letters from Mr. Mimes and myself, and also another sheet that I've made up, which talks about the rate increase. As you'll see from the sheet that I made up, it says it takes 400 and 3,500 cubic feet to make an acre of water. And we've got 30,000 acre feet that we use every year. That equates to 13.27 million 100 acre feet of water. If you took that times 10 cents, you would have $1,327,000, which would take care of part of the, the shortfall you're looking at. The next one is a two cent raise, which would bring up $265,000. The letter Mr. Mimes and I wrote, the second letter, shows that the shortfall will be somewhere around $1,842,000. These two raises, the 10 and the two, two, two centers, will bring $1,857,000 into the coffers, which will take care of this Mojave water adjustment that you're concerned about. Let's see, also, Mr. Lampson wrote us a letter in which he estimated there would be 29,000 acre feet of water used in the present year, 27, 07 and 08. Uh, since that estimate is less than the 06, 07, which was the actual 30,000 in 06, 07, I've used that for my base, since I have a firm one to work with. I've not projected any increases in uh, usage, since I don't believe our consumption will go, go uh, down since I do believe it will go down because of the economic situation. I've been working with Mojave Water Agency for something over 18 years. And we had a TAC meeting, which is a, the Technical Advisory Council to the Water Masters and the, and the uh, Mojave Water Agency. There were 30 to 35 of us at that meeting. The first question I asked them is, raise your hand if you expect we're going to have an increased consumption in water usage, and no one raised a hand. Next question was, how soon do you think this economy is going to recover? If you think it's going to be in four years or less, raise your hand. Not a hand Pickles, came up. I, I'd appreciate if you make your point. Your time is almost up. Okay, well, the... Uh, he has three minutes left there. Shh. Can someone else give me three minutes? <laughs> uh, just a minute. We do that? Where do you, just a minute. The issue is three minutes. Everybody spoke there three minutes. We understand. But as far as MWA, I don't see where it affects us in any way. 
This is this is on ours. And if you'd like to come back at the next meeting on 1118 and finish, you'd be welcome to come back. Okay, you're not going to rule on this. No, we're not. That's why I tonight. said we're taking testimony okay. and all the testimony that was given will be on the record. But we are not making a decision tonight. All right, but thank you. But because it was a public hearing, we did open it. And I, I want to tell you, I'm, I'm sure. prepared not to this evening because we're going to continue, but I will respond to some of your assumptions that you put in your letter. Uh, I read them, and I've gone over them with the uh, water master, our, our water director, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll comment on those at the next meeting. I'll yeah, that's fine. That. One other thing I looked at was the last 10 years, the issues of water. Uh, we had 17,000 acre feet to be used in 98. We had 30,000 in 2000, and seven was the year end. 13,000 acre feet of water is the difference between the two. It's a 10 year span that averages out to 1,300 acre feet per year, and it averages out to a little over 100 acre feet a month. So there's not a big increase in the things. Thank you. <clears throat> the next card I have is Hannah Laura Sonfield. Hi, my name is Barbara. I'm here in her place. Um, we refer to her as Lori okay. to make it easier. Um, Lori is a senior citizen. Um, she has three homes rented on her property, and she's outraged by the water increase due to the fact we bring our water in. We don't even have water coming to our facilities. We have to have it loaded into us, and she's going to be charged for water. So she's really not liking it. She says everything else is raising, and yet if you're not using it, why be charged for it? So she's having a real big issue with this. It's hard on us, the renters, and it's, it's very difficult for her as a senior citizen because she gets the backlash of it on top of she's also paying for her own water to be brought in, and then us individuals are paying for our water to be brought in. So, and right across the highway on Bellflower, the schools and everything have water running away down the thing. There's, um, what are they called? Tail, tail cats growing down the side of the street through the cement from the water that's being wasted on a daily basis. But we can't even get water up to us. There's been developers that are supposed to build and bring water close to her so she can bring it in. Nobody's come close enough for her to bring it in. And even at this point, because she's a senior citizen, there would be no way she could afford to bring the water the rest of the way into the property. So, but they're going to want to charge her for water that she doesn't get, she doesn't use, and that's being wasted by other people. So she has a real problem with that. So that's basically. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Our, our last card on the water issue is Valerie Sexton. Hello again. Okay, I just wanted to start off and say that we were told there would be no water increase. Well, guess what? They lied. Um, you're asking us to go along with a 26% rate increase when people are losing their jobs, their investments, their homes, they're living from credit card, check to check, one week from the next to the next, uh, like I said, credit cards, they're filing bankruptcies. 26% is highway robbery, no matter how you look at it. No one has done a study on the effects it would have on the seniors, on the low-income people in the community. There are people in this day and age, maybe some people think it's hard to understand or to even fathom it when you're making 75, 50, 
$30,000 a year, but there are people living on $300 a month. <coughs> they have to pay at least a third if they're living in community subsidized housing. A third of it goes for their rent. That leaves $200. Out of that, they have to buy their food, pay their utilities, gas, electric, whatever, water, okay? And you know what? Us old folks, we need a phone in case of an emergency, okay? Um, just bear with me, I had some notes here. Okay. I'm on Social Security, my husband is on Social Security. Nowhere am I getting 26% increase. And that's just to cover the water bill. Forget about the gas bill. Forget about the electricity that they're talking about raising. And since I've been in California, and out of the five years my husband and I have been in California, four of them have been in Victorville. We have seen it go up. Service hasn't gotten any better. Okay. The GAO, which is the Government Accounting Office, they're talking about 2.1, 2.3% increase next year. We keep up with it because my husband is a disabled veteran. It's tied in. Okay. And I have uh, one thing here, a final thing I'd like to mention. The school on Hook Boulevard, off of La Paz, Roy Rogers, not the first one, but the second one towards Amethyst. The sprinkler system on that has been broke since May. It's spewing 30 feet up in the air. Guess what? They don't care. The school. <coughs> okay, and let me look, just to make sure. I didn't forget anything. I Yeah, one th you know, I just want to say, like, a person has a $60 bill, okay? My husband and I, we don't use much water, okay, but $60, okay? Guess what? That's almost another $20 a month. And people on limited income, and like I said, everyone is limited to a certain extent nowadays. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, I, that is um, the last card I have on the water issue. Mayor Pro Tem Alman, I think there was another gentleman that at the beginning of public comment deferred his comments perhaps, so I'd be wise to ask if anybody else in the audience has anything else to okay. add. Thank you. Is there anyone else that did not fill out a card that wishes to speak at this time? No, you've already. You were ready to come up on the water. Yes, that's right. I have your card. Okay, if you'll come up now and speak on the water. Yes. I appreciate the opportunity. Anyway, on the public comment. Uh, I realize there's a lot of people up here that have problems in their neighborhood, and the only way I see resolving those problems is get on the phone when you see violations of code enforcement, police department, and hopefully someone will show up. Uh, I, my wife and myself, have been calling code enforcement because in one area of town, the people actually back their car up a driveway, past the carport, into their home, but yet code enforcement sees no priority. It's a fire hazard. They have dead bushes, dead trees. Code enforcement, had two months, three months go by, nothing's been done. So if there's any code enforcement people here, I'll give you the address. But those other people that live over in the other side of the freeway, if you see code enforcement violations, call. But I realize you're afraid to call on your neighbors because you always have to worry about retribution. And uh, the only thing I could tell you is have somebody down the street call. That way, they, and theoretically, code enforcement is not supposed to let the complainant, uh, not supposed to let their names go out right. on who's doing the complaint. But, you know, I, I wish you all the luck in the world with uh, uh, neighborhood watches. We've been there. They work. Uh, the biggest problem up here, you have uh, out-of-town landlords and you have uh, absentee parents. And that's a big problem when you have kids hanging around your neighborhood. Where are the parents? Everybody goes down the hill. They don't come home till seven or eight at night. 
And uh, as the saying goes, I commuted for 28 years. I don't have to drive the hill anymore. And I wish all you people in the new neighborhoods lots of luck. Thank you. Okay, there was one other, there was one other hand. Yes. If, pardon me? Did you fill out a card? Uh, I was the, oh, I asked you to wait until it came up. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, I told you I was going to goof on tonight, so I don't mean to offend you. What are you going to do? <clears throat> My name is Daryl Batten. I'm a resident of Victorville, California. I'm one of the few natives of this state. Uh, a retired Marine uh, drill sergeant. Folks... <coughs> The money is drying up. You've probably heard that a few times here tonight. So what you need to be thinking about is not increasing rates or the cost of doing business. You need to be thinking about decreasing it because there is no more money. I don't have any more, and most of the people out here, they don't have any more to pay any increased cost. So you have your homework figure out how to decrease the cost. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, there was a lady out there with her hand up. <clears throat> Since I don't have a card, would you please give us your name? Erica Hanabry, I live in the city of Victorville. I just moved here from Utah. <clears throat> so this is, this is completely new to me. But one thing I noticed that when I signed up for the water, it was, I was astounded by your extra fees that you charge to get your water service. I was charged $35 for paperwork fees, which I thought they were already being paid an hourly fee to take care of that. I don't understand that fee. Uh, they charged me a fee, of course, to come out, I guess, to read the meter. Um, but anyway, I got that all straightened out. But the thing that bothers me is the raise in the rates, because you ask us to conserve. You ask us to keep rock yards, to change them into rock yards and everything. Then when we conserve, we have to conserve the toilets, the sinks, you name it, the leaking faucets. And now you're asking for a raise. I don't get it. We conserve. We tighten our belts. We expect you to tighten our belts with this water district problem also. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have no other cards. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak? Um, Madam Chair, not... make a comment. You're not out in the audience. Make a comment before they leave. I'm kidding. Um, there's a general policy out here that I think I want to make sure some of you understood it. Certainly Mr. Nichols does and some of you don't uh, or don't realize it. Uh, any new growth right now, according to the Mojave Water Agency, we have a um, we're equal in balance. In other words, we're taking out as much as being recharged in uh, into the basin at this time. The whole population, approximately 450,000 people uh, in the Victor Valley. Uh, any new growth must produce new water and there's only one source of new water and that's the aqueduct. So as an example, the, the uh, SWEPS uh, Dr. Pepper uh, uh, plant out there, they are purchasing all that water from the aqueduct. They will, they've purchased it, they'll, they'll use it, they'll treat it and about three-fourths of it gets recharged back into the basin. So the fact is that it's a net increase of water to the basin uh, when the process gets completely done. But that's the way the system works right now. Any new growth out there uh, must produce new uh, water. And the only way to do that uh, so far is the uh, California aque aqueduct. That's the only unique new source of water. Uh, if we can uh, use water a second time, which we're working on now, uh, uh, we've certainly got the purple pipe system in. If we can recycle that and put that in play in terms of uh, schools and parks and all the other uh, activities, and we've done that on our uh, uh, golf course at the airport uh, already, you have to have a delivery system, and that's coming. But uh, that will allow us to, again, have double use of the water. So uh, I just want to let you know, all new growth that comes in the, into the valley, not just Victorville, but the whole Victor Valley, must 
produce new water. It must match its water consumption. And the only source so far is the California Aqueduct. Uh, we haven't come close to uh, tapping out our uh, allowable uh, drawdown on that. Uh, and there's some other far-reaching uh, options down there. I've, many of you have heard me uh, talk about desalination. Uh, there was a time when uh, desalinated ocean water cost about $2,000 an acre foot. Well, it's down. Uh, there's some uh, operating in San Francisco right now for about uh, six to eight hundred dollars an acre foot. Costs completely treated water about three hundred dollars a num round number out of the aqueduct uh, to uh, treat the water and put it into your pipe. So uh, desalination is coming close. Los Angeles takes two and a half million acre feet of water from the California aqueduct, pumps it over the hill for their needs. If we could throw that straw into the ocean. All of a sudden, this side of the mountain range is that's not pie in the sky. That's economics, engineering. That's things that are coming down the line here. So there's hope. We've got 75 percent of this planet is water, and we shouldn't be out here. Uh, that should be one of the cheapest and easiest commodities to deliver. Uh, but a lot of technology, a lot of politics, and a lot of business is in play as well as just the ideas. So uh, nevertheless, I just want to let you know, all new growth, our SWEPS plan out there is one of them. Uh, they're taking their taking their water from the aqueduct. They're not taking water out of the ground. And when they get done with it, it's treated by our, the treatment plant that we'll be building, and it will be discharged into the basin. So just to let you know, there's a little tidbit of information there. Some of you may not know. Okay. With that, I will be closing the public hearing at this time. No, pro Tem, you are not actually closing. You're just going to continue it to the November 18th. Uh, no, I just open. meant for tonight. Correct. Okay. I'm not closing it. I'm not closing it. <laughs> I'm going to continue this until 1118 um, in these chambers. And thank you all for coming and giving us your input. With that, we will move on to item <coughs> number four, which is the consent calendar. <coughs> okay. I have a second. I may vote. Councilmember uh, Rothschild, right. thank you. Thank you for waiting for me. Welcome. <laughs> Is that what we're waiting for? I'm looking over there at the screen and no one's voted. I know. Right? <laughs> okay, moving on. We will be moving on to the City of Victorville City Council agenda. And uh, is there any uh, revisions to the agenda? There are requests to continue items 4 and 8 to the November 18th meeting and a request to remove item number 19, but other than that, no revisions. Remove number 19? Yes. Okay. And number 8. Okay. With that, um, we will go on to item number 3 is the appeal hearing. And I have a card. Uh, Ms. Carloni. Yeah, I knew how to say your name. You knew how to say my yeah. name. I hope so after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. I rise tonight to speak on behalf of the applicant, Muna Maida, who is a small businessman attempting to establish a business in the city of Victorville and the Brentwood area. This is an appeal of the Planning Commission's Planning Commission's denial of a CUP and a finding of convenience and necessity to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages in a neighborhood grocery store in the Brentwood area. We find the decision of the Planning Commission, which according to your minutes and my records here, based upon a finding that there was, and I'll, I'll read you that portion, uh, an undue concentration of off-sale ABC licenses with, within the census tract, which applies to this area, the close proximity to schools and parks, and the current accessibility to other commercial businesses that sold alcoholic beverages for off-site consumption. We find that reasoning a bit pretextual in the course of the balance of the minutes of that meeting, where it shows that the main concern of the two planning commissioners who constituted a majority for denial, not the entire commission, were more concerned about the potential for crime and loitering and problems in the area. 
And we would submit to you that it was that was the basis of their decision because that same planning commission has approved findings of public necessity and convenience in the same census track in approving the Winco offsite sales and in approving the CVS pharmacy offsite sales. Winco being closer to schools than Mr. Maida's proposed project and right across the street from Stater Brothers that has off-site sales of alcoholic beverages. So therefore, we come to you to take a fresh look at this particular application and ask that you approve the application and provide you with some additional information. Hopefully, what has been placed before you is my letter, which has quite a bit of detail included there with letters of support and photographs, including an aerial overhead of this project. The project is at the corner, if I may wait until you have that before you, and not have that charged against my time. As that is passing out, I was most pleased to see the reaffirmation of this city's support of small business individuals in granting the award to the Hispanic Chamber. The city has always been known for its support of small businesses, and we would hope that the current decision was, uh, that is now up for appeal was not simply um, an unfair uh, looking at a business when we, when we compare Winco to Mike's Market, which is a neighborhood convenience store. In any event, in this area, the um, one more item before I get into the detail. I want you to know that this particular gentleman and his family have, have over 18 of these types of establishments throughout the state of California. In Apple Valley, they are well known and recognized as being top 25 sales tax producers for many years. They are good corporate citizens, good business citizens, and they're looking for your support. This particular project at the corner of Hook Boulevard in Elevado is in a small commercial strip that is currently 90% vacant. It falls within the Brentwood specific plan, which allows for neighborhood commercial in the area of the commercial centers of the specific plan. The neighborhood commercial, according to your zoning, has its primary purpose for small limited shopping centers planned and designed in cooperation with the Planning Commission to meet neighborhood shopping needs. The neighborhood real estate district is consistent with commercial land use designation of the general plan. This area cries out for a small neighborhood market. And I've provided you with pictures of the intended market that uh, Mr. Maida and his family hope to provide. As you can see, it is a small grocery store. There is over 720 square feet of grocery products. We're talking eggs, milk, bacon, salsa, cleaning supplies, Tylenol for your kids, peanut butter, jelly, as well as ice cream, milk. There are 30 cold cases, 22 of which contain grocery products. There is one long shelf, about 120 square feet versus the 720, of spirits that are controlled behind the counter and register portion of the store, and there are only eight out of 30 cold cases that have cold beer and wine for sale. We believe that the Planning Commission may have seen this project as a liquor store as opposed to a neighborhood market, and we believe that that was part of the uh, reasoning behind their particular decision, which does not comply with prior acts of the Commission the uh, and and the compliance of this project with your uh, Brentwood specific plan. My letter sets forth uh, a number of details regarding the store itself. And how's my time? Because I'm concerned. No. Okay. Um, the project meets the criteria of the C1 zoning. It's going to serve approximately 1,700 homes with approximately 5,500 residents. There is no commercial establishment uh, within approximately one mile except going to the north. I have given you an aerial map. In the middle of the aerial map is the establishment. You can see the neighborhoods that will be served by this establishment. The only commercial is located here at Elevado and Palmdale, which is the Ralphs. The CVS is going in across the street. One mile to the east is the Stater Brothers, and the Winco is going in across the street. And the only other commercial establishment in the area is the Rite Aid, which is a half a mile to the north. This 
particular market meets all of the criteria of neighborhood commercial. Can I ask you one question, Diane, before you continue? Was this all presented to the Planning Commission? What you're presenting to us now with the pictures? I did not present it, but all of this was presented to the Planning this Commission. This is the same information that? I, I don't know if it's the same information. No, but I'm I was, saying this is? I don't know because okay. I was not present at Planning okay. Commission. I'm trying to establish that the materials that were presented at the Planning Commission as they relate to your codes and to your C1 commercial designation show that this project fits expressly within the criteria and that the purpose of a public convenience and necessity finding under the Business and Professions Code as well as your own code say that if it shortens the distance between, uh, let me read it because it's in your staff report. <coughs> I'm dry. <laughs> the undue con concentration regulation reduces the number of licenses allowed in Victorville in comparison with cities of higher residential densities. This is from your staff. Consequently, the distance between licensed retail establishments selling alcoholic beverages is increased. Therefore, public convenience or necessity is served by reducing the distances between these establishments. If you take a look at the area map, you see that we have reduced that distance, but we don't want you to concentrate on the fact that there's alcohol sales because this is actually a market that is serving a community that would have to drive a mile to get a like service. Now, I drove through there yesterday just to get an idea where it was and what it looked like, and I can understand the convenience for bread and milk and things like that. Um, I have other cards here, though. Thank you. I'd be happy you. to answer any questions at the end if the, if the council has questions. The, the only question I have <laughs> is the same one that the, Mrs. Allman had for you, and I don't know if your client can let you know. My major concern, is, as you can imagine, is was the Planning Commission given this same information to make their decision? Because it's, for me, I don't want to receive information the Planning Commission didn't have an opportunity to see. My, my understanding is orally they received the same information, yes. They did not receive the analysis of the, of the provisions. Mr. Webb? Okay, thank you. We're not. But the same information was presented. Thank you. Thank you. All thank right. You, thank you. I have other. I'm sorry. Did you want to say something? No, that's it. No, Mike. I, I just wanted to ask whether any procedural errors that had, you'd perceived of any procedural errors, because basically, was, as you presented the case here, uh, sounds to me like you're saying you, you don't agree with the Planning Commission's uh, requirements of this UP and that uh, to deny the liquor, and you want the council to overrule that. I find that the stated reason was not supported by the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting. So to that extent, yes, there is a procedural error. And the stated reason is, is somewhat pretextual uh, in consideration of the only expressed concerns being crime, loitering, and that, that idea. And there is specific provisions in the Business and Professions Code, Section 23859, which says if you're going to make a finding and deny it on that basis, you have to have crime statistics. Uh, let me give you the actual site. It's 23958.4, the Business and Professions Code, and it reads, the applicant premises are located in a crime reporting district that has a 20% greater number of reported crimes as defined in subdivision C than the average number of reported crimes as determined from all crime reporting districts within the jurisdiction of the local law enforcement agency. And there was no such uh, information provided to the Planning Commission so they cannot make a determination of denying it on the basis of a, a high incident of crime. So yes, I believe there was an error. So they took the idea of this concentration, uh, a high concentration of, of licenses, and what has occurred is in the very same area, in closer proximity, right across the street from other um, licensed premises, that same Planning Commission approved CUP for licenses. So that's pretextual as well. So because they I have a comment, and I we have other cards here too. 
No, go ahead and make your oh. comment. I'm just saying. There's yeah, we're, and we're talking about the statistics for crime. I, you know, I don't know if I have any, or the police department might have for that area, but, you know, we get people from Brentwood coming in here quite often complain about the crime in that area. So I would, I would like to know what, what, what those stats are. That's, you know, you think well, that's one of the criteria. There, there is no crime attributed to this market. There is no market there. There's an empty building now that if you drive by it is showing some signs of disrepair. This, a business there that's, that's well run, that has security, surveillance, that uh, is uniformed em employees trained that has that kind of pride of business establishment, as you can see from the pictures in, in the Oak Hill facility, is not going to settle for crime. And we'll take steps and you certainly can condition the CUP if that is a concern. I have other cards here. Go ahead. I don't have any more questions for you. I have something for Mr. Webb, but you can go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Webb, uh, just looking at the, um, the, the staff write-up, am I correct? Staff recommended approval of this project? Thank you, Mr. Webb. Okay, I have other cards for this item. Uh, the next one is Michelle Medina. Good evening. I have a house in that area. As business owners, obviously they don't know the area. I know the council knows. The people that were in here earlier from Cherry Brook is right off Reno Loop in the Brentwood area. Crime is crazy in that area. To add something like that is just unthinkable in my opinion. I live there. I have property there. I have friends there, neighbors. I have a petition from signed people that do not want this there. It's, it's insane just to think that the city would even consider that. Planning Commission turned it down. Um, there is a lot of crime in that area. We have Winco coming in, which is gonna be cheaper, more of a selection. You have Stater Brothers. My cousin works there. I can't tell you how many times they allow people to walk in with carts, walk right out, rather than approach them because they're stealing food. The economy is horrible right now. People are going to do that, and you're going to tell me that this one little convenience supermarket slash that sells li liquor in an area that is infested with Section 8 homes, an area that has boarded up houses just like the rest of Victorville, is going to be convenient. We need to get exercise. People need to walk a mile, so do that. It doesn't seem like it's going to be much of a convenience. It's going to be more of a hassle when you have Stater Brothers, Cross Street, you have Winco, who knows what else is going in. It's, you have the Dollar Tree, down, Dollar Tree down the street from that. People buy food there, 99 cent store. It doesn't make sense to have something like this in a master plan community, which is not much of a master plan community. Um, I've been here for years, you all know me, I've always come in, let you guys know about all the crime, the issues. I've called code enforcement on things like that. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. It's been pretty much the same. It's disappointing to know that you guys would even consider something like that. We need more things for our children. We do have a lot of latchkey kids. We do have pretty much not much for anything as far as junior high children, <coughs> high schoolers. There's really nothing for them to express themselves. I mean, I can't even allow my kids to be outside in the front without worrying about what else is going to happen to them. I do not let them out in the back, and this is not why I moved up here. And now, unfortunately, I'm behind, I'm backwards on my house, so I can't even leave, even if I wanted to. Um, just taking in consideration, I live there. Like I said, my kids go to Brentwood, which is walking distance. You can't do something like that. It's not going to be something that's going to benefit, especially the Brentwood area in the city of Victorville. There's plenty of other places that are empty land that need a convenience store that don't have anything around, not that location. Do you Thank need you. a petition that I have? I can give it to our city clerk. She 
Let me just say one thing that you, you made a comment. You want to know why we were addressing this. We're addressing this because everybody here in the community has a right to be heard, number one, and they have a right to the due process. And the due process is they can appeal their hearings. So, so you know we are required to let people do that. So if you're asking us why we let people do that, that's their right, just like your right. So it's not something we're just doing lightly. We have to look at that, and that's where the appeal process, just like a court's the appeal process. Where people are, are allowed to do that, to put appeal in when the Planning Commission makes a decision they don't like, they appeal to a higher person. That's this council. That's why we do that. Okay, the next card I have is Ronald um, Sunvale. Um, I'm here uh, because this uh, business is going to be less than 200 feet from my back door of my house. I've lived there for 10 years. I remember when it was a dirt lot there. Um, now there are, there used to be a pizza place there. I know the owner that lived there. They're gone because of the problems they were having with the kids over there throwing rocks at the building and all this other stuff. Um, We live in that area. They don't live in that area. So, of course, you know, you go through the, during the day, it's fine. Come through there at night. They've had gang fights on that corner. They had a neighborhood watch person shot in the face with a shotgun last year. He was in the paper. I right out of Brentwood. You've got four schools. There. You've got two brand new schools that went up on Seneca. you got the one on Hook, and you got the Brentwood school. This is going to sit right in the middle, a half a mile from each one of those schools. You know, the noise now with the cars and the kids over there now, but, you know, what's this going to be like once this place gets established. Now, I'm, I'm all for a small business, but, you know, the close proximity of all the other businesses there that can serve the people of that area, I mean, it's it's all over the place right there. You can go any direction, get whatever you want within five-minute drive. Um, just the schools. Oh. They say, you know, I touched on a neighborhood watch. I mean, I'm just, I'm not for this. I mean, it's like 200 feet from my back, you know, from my back wall. My house butts up to Elibata right there in the business. You know, it was a good business over there. You know, they all call the crime over in Brentwood. I and mean, Brentwood's got a name. It's called Brenthood anymore. You mentioned Brentwood. They go, where? Brenthood. Oh, yeah, Brenthood. <coughs> you know, I'm, like I said, I'm all for small business, but, you know, we don't need this type of business over there. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The next card I have is Bruce uh, Callen. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. My name is Bruce Callen, and I reside in Apple Valley. Uh, I'll preface my comments tonight uh, by saying that I'm not representing the town of Apple Valley. I have a position in the town, and I don't want to. I want to give my personal opinion. I own a small business, and I have for 27 years. Of the 27 years, 20 of them I've spent uh, dealing with the applicants. Uh, they own currently, and I'm sure you know if, if it hasn't been brought forward, they own the mobile on Central Road in Apple Valley. They own the mobile on Yucaloma and Apple Valley Road. They own the new uh, mobile station in Oak Hills on Escondido and Ranchero. They own the Valero station in Lucerne Valley, and they own a new liquor store, convenience store in Atlanta. I wouldn't come up here and vouch for anybody that I deal with if I didn't feel like they were good business people. Uh, the, the people that we're talking about here have run businesses in the desert for 20 years. Their employees wear uniforms. Their lots are clean. Their store is well stocked. They're friendly. They're neighborly. They do a good job. Uh, with this conditional use permit, you as a council obviously can condition them to take security measures. I understand people's concern whenever you, whenever you discuss spirits alcohol, that type of thing. But the fact is, it's not the business's fault that there's crime in that area. And it won't be the business's fault if the crime continues, especially if it's run responsibly. These applicants, uh, I was on the Little League board in Apple Valley for 10 years. They sponsor Little League teams. They sponsor soccer teams. They contribute back to the, to the community in a way that most liquor stores don't do. They just provide a service and they know how to run a store. Uh, I know firsthand that planning commissions make mistakes. I know firsthand that uh, councils make mistakes. I think in this case I would have to agree with Ms. Carloni that you have the opportunity to increase business, uh, put, a, put a business in an otherwise uh, almost vacant strip center, uh, put responsible people in there and condition them and keep an eye on them 
And if, if there's a problem, obviously you can revoke their, their conditional use permit. I would say, as somebody who has dealt with these people for the past 20 years, I would personally endorse any business they put up. They would be good neighbors for Victorville. They don't have a business in Victorville at this point, and I think that uh, Victorville could use more of these kind of businesses. The other comment I'll make is, because I deal with a lot of stores, I have a small business, a food distribution business, and I deal with a lot of stores, I think you'll find if they are successful in this business, along with Winco and a couple of the other businesses that are well run, a lot of these little trashy liquor stores fall by the wayside. So you'll accomplish really the long-term goal that you're trying to do by, by basically putting in businesses that are responsible and neighborly and, and really provide a good service to the area because they do not want crime in their center and they will not tolerate uh, hoodlums and loiterers and that type of thing. So that's all I have to say. I hope you uh, will, will uh, agree with me. Thanks. Okay, the next card I have is Nancy. Um, Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I'm here, you know me as um, Senior Management of Desert Community Bank, so I want to make sure that I clarify this is me personally coming, I, not the bank speaking. I want to make sure you understand that. But uh, I am a small business uh, supporter, have been for two decades through the bank. These folks I do know very well, and I have known them just about the whole 20 years I've been up here. The people of Brentwood are concerned about their children and having programs. And I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother. Their Apple Valley store is a block and a half from my house. And I have to tell you that go one and a half blocks past the store on the other side, and there's an elementary school. When they came to me and talked to me and discussed the issue of being declined, I have all good things to say about the way they've supported the community, the security in their stores. They're clean. They don't allow people to loiter. And it's more of a market than a liquor store. But yes, they sell liquor, no doubt. Well, I took it upon myself to even go down, have an appointment with the elementary school principal. Because in my 20 years, I have, in the high desert here, I have never supported a small business owner in this way before a city council because of just trying to step away. But in this case, they're so close to my own home, my children have grown up there, I have grandchildren, I know firsthand their support. And I can tell you this principal told me firsthand if she wasn't out of state because of a vacation uh, break in the school, she would have been here herself. And she told me that these folks are one of their biggest supporters of their school. They want children's programs. These people have young children themselves. And they don't want problems in the neighborhoods. These guys have donated so much money to the schools and to the community to help with programs for children to keep them out of trouble. And they don't allow loitering. They are clean operators, and you heard it from other people. I, I rarely, if ever, stand up on behalf of something except uh, I can't tell you how, on one hand, I could tell you how many times. And this is one that I feel very strongly I could personally stand there and tell you. Their support would put programs in place to keep kids off the streets that people are asking for in Brentwood. And it's much better than a vacant building being vandalized. I know this myself from my own perspective from the small business support world. So I, I ask that you would uh, reconsider and uh, approve this because I think the Brentwood community will be well served by their support of that community, and I know firsthand that they would support community programs for those kids. Thank you. Thank you. The next card I have is um, Sophie Stino. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members. I uh, did submit a letter for the record, and I'd like to refer to that. Um, we did create the map. We made it a little bit more specific. Um, we felt that the Planning Commission had looked at a, the analysis based on an old track map with old numbers of households in the direct vicinity. 
So th this evening I'm asking for your support in granting and approving the proposed CUP PON 094 to allow for Michael's Market, a neighborhood convenience store, to be located at 14890 Elevato. The map will show you, as many people have already mentioned, there is a need for a neighborhood convenience store. This family has over eight or 18 stores in California for close to 20 years. Not one city has ever denied them their conditional use or site plan approval. Uh, there is certainly going to be violence whether this site is occupied by Michael's convenience store or any other business or left alone. But the fact is, and as industry proves for many years, that commercial development is known to be a deterrent to crime. Um, I encourage you to be very objective in your decision for the necess necessity of granting this CUP and not swayed by public outcry of increased crime due to the opening of a convenience store well suited for this neighborhood and well needed. The sale and mix of products to be sold at this convenience store location is no different than the sale and mix of products already sold in surrounding stores. But I may add that spirits are behind the cashier and regulated by the counter employees, as opposed to being able to walk into any state of brothers, any drugstore or supermarket and get those spirits right off the shelf. Um, we, we, I ask personally as a small business owner uh, to look at all of the, the people that spoke tonight and all their comments because I don't want to duplicate them to, in supporting the Maeda family by welcoming them into the Brentwood neighborhood with a viable business opportunity. Your support will be justified with a new, caring, successful, long-term business partner and valuable neighbor to Victorville. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I have uh, another card, Daryl Benton. Pardon me? Daryl Batten, B-A-T-T-E-N. I guess he left. I have another one. Uh, Michael Romero, Sr. All right. Forgive me for being a little nervous. I've never done this before. Um, I'm a resident of Brentwood, and uh, I've been a resident of Victorville for about 30 years. Uh, I grew up here. Uh, I've seen a lot of change, a lot of growth. Uh, I'm also the uh, district sales manager for a company up here, a dairy company, Swiss Dairy. In, uh, that's the entire high desert. And we've been working with uh, the Meta family for the last, well, I have been for the last 14 years. And I've seen the, the stores that they've built and the stores that they run, and they're a very clean establishment. Um, I, too, feel that, you know, there is crime in, in Brentwood and the names they have for it, you know, they're there, but that's not due to the convenience stores that are around the local area. I feel that putting this convenience store here uh, helps out, as well as me talking to people in my neighborhood, that they welcome a convenience store. It's somewhere where we can walk, we can walk down to, and everybody's mentioned all these other things of milk and stuff like that, but no one mentioned the ice cream, and we do sell quite a bit of ice cream. Uh, and there are quite a bit of children around there that, I mean, People walk around there and would love to walk around there when the sun starts going down. And uh, be it that there is some crime, but that's, of a, I've, I feel, a different nature. And that's the police department and everything of that nature. Uh, and they're doing their best to protect us in their ways. But the homes that are broken into and stuff of that, that's going to happen. That happens everywhere. It's not just there. Uh, it's just, and that's, I, I believe it's the people that live in that area that need to uh, call the police and say something to people. People tend to close up when stuff like that happens for fear of retaliation. Um, <clears throat> what else did I have here? Um, well, again, uh, they do help out the, uh, the school facilities. My kids go to uh, Brentwood. I have kids in the high school too. I support the, the area and the city as well as my business, and I've seen them support the schools and, and other areas of that nature. So like, uh, I guess, as I said, 
I hope you guys look at it and approve it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <clears throat> With that, I have, that's the last card. Oh, I saw the microphone come down. Uh, that's the last card I have on this item. Would the council like to discuss? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I get a real problem with people generalize businesses coming and saying they create crime. And while, yeah, there are some that I'm sure that do, businesses really don't create crime. <laughs> crime in the area is an issue that I have a, to do, I have a problem with. It. Parents not controlling a lot of their kids. And it's, it's one of the problems we've got in this community. It's a lot of the problems we've got in this state and in this nation is there's, there's no control of the children anymore. And they're out there running the streets and doing what they do. And then the police department has to take care of it and be babysitters, which I think is ridiculous. But I don't think we can blame it on the business. No, no business is creating the crime problem. Um, and there were, there were, we're always complaining that, you know, everyone's complaining, well, the businesses are going out of business, well, the economy's bad. We've got a business that wants to come in, start their establishment. They, they're well recognized throughout the community, um, both in Apple Valley and Victorville and Oak Hills, and, and have good recommendations. I don't have a problem with a business like this going in because I don't believe that business creates the problems. I think the other problems have to be dealt with. The crime issues have to be dealt with, but they're not the part of the, the business that's going in. So I don't have a problem with this kind of business uh, being established over there. Okay. I have a question for uh, Director of Planning. Uh, Bill Webb, Mr. Webb. Yeah, Mr. Webb. Bill. That report indicates that uh, it was recommended for approval by staff. Right. What what reasons did you have for that? Uh, just basically on the on the basis of standard policy, uh, and not wanting to staff to set precedent on policy decisions, uh, community decisions without without a public forum, uh, not making precedents with a with a not wanting to make set precedents by failing to find, make the findings for uh, findings of necessity uh, when we have undue um, concentration, over concentration in, in various other areas. Uh, so basically it's up to the, it's up to this, the hearing process and the community coming out and that's why it's discretionary. That's why the Planning Commission has that authority. And this was one where we did not differentiate necessarily from from other types of development similar in the in the community. Uh, uh, one point, if I may, clarification: we are discussing the conditional use permit only for the alcohol. The convenience store is 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 a separate issue, and that's a, a permitted use. But we're we're only discussing whether the convenience store sells alcohol or not. It, it, there was some discussion about we need a convenience store. That's that that was not the commission's decision. And the alcohol end of it. Then. It's the alcohol. Thank you. Any other questions for Bill? I, I just have a comment, and I, I have to be very honest. I, I came in here with with the, my mind, and it shouldn't be that way, but I kind of thought it shouldn't be there. I, 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 I'm well through there and listening to the uh, the people from Brentwood. Um, but you're right, you know, it's the store wasn't there, and the crime's been going on for, for a while, so it's I don't think you can really blame the store all you – you tend to associate liquor stores have a bad uh, with the, with connotation. You, know, you, you associate them, but uh, not all of them are that way. And, and so, uh, you know, I just at the beginning of the meeting we talked about the small businesses that are going to bring back the economy. Um, and it's kind of hard for me to preach small business support, small business support, and then come up here and then, you know, do do something contrary to that. And, and again, weighing weighing all the factors. Um, you know, I, I would I would support, you know, would support the uh, the, the uh, appeal. I would uh, I would move the resolution. If Mike doesn't have anything to say, I'd, I'd move the resolution granting the uh, granting the appeal. So you were doing A. So yes, A. B, A. Correct. A. A. Right. A. A. Second. We have a motion. Not working. Okay. And a second. For resolution um, number 08-145, uh, granting the appeal. May we vote? 
No, there is. Nor normally, you wouldn't see a vote like Madam this Chair, in this council. Does, does this is rather wait, unusual, but wait. you'll notice that uh, the Planning Commission was not a full Planning Commission. That was unfortunate. Uh, I don't know what the reasons were, but uh, on a 2 1 decision like that, that would certainly inappropriate for. Uh, a more extensive hearing at the council level. Usually, well, is there a procedural error? No. Okay, then you're, it's denied. Excuse That's, me. you know, kind of rubber stamp way to go about doing it. The Supreme Court does that all the time. What? Andre. Can I just clarify that? Not your, mine. Your no, no, no. no, we're not looking for your $5. Mr. DeBorodowski would like to say something. I just want to make sure that your motion also included the finding of public necessity. That's correct. Okay, welcome to the city. <laughs> okay, with that, we will move on to a continued public hearing. Item number four. Uh, I hear arguments for or against the nuisance abatement uh, of the property located at 15623 5th Street in Victorville. And with that, I have one card. Um, I will open the public hearing. And the card I have is Mr. Paul uh, Chasey. Yes. I'm sorry, yes. Chasey. Good evening, Mayor Pertam and Council Members. Um, I was here about three weeks ago when this matter was uh, continued. And uh, I won't reiterate what I said then about the value that the Cali California Route 66 Museum has. Uh, before I, let me start again. My name is Paul Chassey. I'm a volunteer at the California Route 66 Museum and a board member at the museum. But three weeks ago, I, I uh, gave some comments about the value of the museum to the, to the Victor Valley and to tourists from around the world. And at that time, I hoped that we could resolve the issue of that uh, burned out apartment building behind our, our museum. Hopefully tonight the issue is resolved after after many years of trying to get it resolved. And uh, with that, uh, I would just like to uh, ask one favor, if it is re approved uh, tonight. Uh, we have our uh, birthday party and classic car show on November 8th of this year, Saturday, November 8th. It's our 13th anniversary. We have a lot of people there, a lot of cars. And I hope if this is approved that we can uh, expedite the process and have that building removed down to the bare ground before we have our anniversary celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Have um, you ever seen government move that fast? Yeah, I was just going to say. Sorry? Have yeah. you ever seen government move that fast? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. <laughs> That's the only card I have on this item. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, um, staff on this item is actually recommending a 30-day continuance uh, based on the fact that we are currently working with the lenders to uh, address the issues. Okay, I'm sorry I missed that one. Okay. don't have to grant it, but that's what staff's recommendation is. Would okay, it will be continued. Okay, continuation of this item for 30 days. Till 1118 in these chambers. Right. I saw you. Okay, um, we'll move on to item number five. Um, an ordinance of the City of Victorville adopting an amendment to the title of the City of Victorville Municipal Code adding Chapter 15.02.035 titled Permit Expiration. Yes, I will open. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's open that. I, I will open the public hearing on that item. Anyone wishing to speak for or against? Seeing no one, I will close the item. I will close the public hearing. And Mayor Pro Tem Alman, I do need to read the title of the ordinance. Oh, okay, I didn't read the whole thing. An ordinance of the City of Victorville adopting an amendment uh, to Title 15 of the City of Victorville Municipal Code, adding Chapter 15.02.035, titled Permit Expiration. Right? Wave for the reading. <laughs> Would that yeah, be a motion to waive and adopt? Or introduce, I'm sorry. Introduce. Whatever. Yes. May we vote? Okay, um, agenda item number six. 
uh, hearing for or against adoption of resolution number 08-143 entitled the resolution the city of Victorville the city finding and declaring that the public convenience and necessity <coughs> justify and require the granting of the certificate of public uh, excuse me convenience and necessity till to Silvano Gonzalez DBA high desert yellow cab I will open the public hearing Anybody wishing to speak for or against? <coughs> Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and take a vote, please. Or anybody wish to discuss? Oh, we have a first and a second. Oh. Motion carries. Number seven is the consent calendar. And good thing we don't run out of alphabets. Okay. Oh, you don't want me to give you the whole spiel? Okay, number eight, a requ re written communications request to name the city hall. Um, on this item, we are, <coughs> excuse me, we are going to continue this item until 11 1808, but there are some cards here. Uh, Mr. Dibornowski, can I? If, if you wish to do it now, it's not a public hearing item, so um, certainly you're welcome to take the cards right now, or you can defer and, and wait to the uh, items being considered at the next meeting. It's your choice. It's my choice? Okay. Um, can I hold these cards until 11 18 08 in these chambers on this item? Would that, okay. You may want to give the people the opportunity to save them coming back the next No, they meeting. said they went like this. I saw Mr. Sexton did this, and he yeah. said it's okay. So I will give these. To, <laughs> I like. I can understand that. I get that at home a lot. So I will give this to our city clerk so she can hold these for. And your cards will be with her for that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, number nine is. Um, a request to adopt resolution number zero eight dash one four two. The City of Victorville giving approval and authorization to destroy certain records uh, of the uh, Customer Service Department. We have a first and second. May we vote? <clears throat> okay, nine. A request uh, that the notice of exemption uh, for the Innovation, Innovation Way Street Improvement Project be adopted and approved. We have the first and second. May we vote? Okay. Uh, Eleven request uh, that the notice of exemption for the Seneca, Emerald, and Diamond Road Street Improvement Project be adopted and approved. Okay. <coughs> A motion. Uh, number 12, request to award a contract for easement acquisition for CPSI in the amount of $37,000. Okay. Number 13, item 13, a request to waive a minor irregularity in low bidder bid as described in staff report and award a contract to Cooley Construction as the low bidder for the price of $528,599.71. And 14 is an item that we took care of. Correct. Yeah, I remember that one. Item number 15 is request to adopt resolution number 08-148, a resolution in the city of Victorville hereby authorizing the director of development to apply for a waste tire enforcement grant and execute all grant related operations. Motion carries 16. Discussion of AB 761 relating to establish a goal of 25% participation of small businesses, local businesses for purchase and or contracts. 
Mr. Gabriel, if that was your agreement. Yeah, this, this item, I, I learned about it about a month and a half ago. It's up in a conference, a business conference, chamber conference, actually, and someone from uh, one of the state agencies uh, spoke on particular on this uh, 25 participation for small businesses. Uh, and, I, and, I, and it's a, um, it's a mandate. It's a bill that was passed and it's approved by the governor. And it, uh, it has to do mostly with your uh, infrastructure bonds. That, and uh, it uh, requires all your state agencies to have uh, a goal of 25% participation for both small businesses, local businesses, for purchases or contracts. So I think the charity belongs to start, start at home. And I think we ought to maybe have our purchasing department look at this and see how we can integrate this, not just for for the infrastructure, but for a lot of the other things that we do. One of the things we did today was we, we awarded a local contract, uh, uh, well, some vehicles, but also to, to Cooley, which is he's in this area, but it's still, still close enough. It's local. So I think we ought to look at that and see if we can expand on it and, and, and make it a policy of this council. I think it's a good idea, Rudy. Really. I, I, you know, we've always made comment whenever we've seen bids come in for down the hill vehicles or things, you know, we've always wanted to, it's one of the reasons we really pushed also for the charter amendment. Yeah. For some of the things we can do up here, and I, I agree with you. So if that's your motion, really. I would like to make a motion that we, uh, uh, our goal would be the same as the state for 25% participation for small businesses or local businesses for purchase and or contracts, and that staff would work out the policy to reflect that. Okay. Any other comments? Oh. Well, it's not a public hearing thing. Very good. Okay, thank you. We need a motion. Yeah, you want to make a motion? We have a first and second. Hey, we vote. Okay. Uh, item number 17, request to award a contract to GE Water and Process Technology. I don't even know if I'm reading right. For the uh, <laughs> membrane uh, bioreactor system, I should just said MBR, <laughs> for the SCLA Industrial Wastewater Treatment Plan in the amount of, okay, 4 million. Is that 4 million, 28,000? Madam Mayor, Pro Tem, um, staff would like you possibly to also consider item 18 concurrently, which is these both pertain to the wastewater treatment plan, and staff would like to recommend that your approval be uh, include a condition, and that condition being that the only expenditures, if you approve both of these items made to date, would be to fund <coughs> the engineering costs and that the additional construction costs not be uh, agreed to until such time as there is a close of escrow with respect to the Dr. Pepper Schweppes project. That will give you some protection in terms of uh, proceeding with the contract. So the, the idea would be that you would approve these amounts here, but the condition would be that you would only be funding engineering costs uh, at this point and that the other costs would not be incurred until close of escrow. But go ahead and approve both amounts that are on the agenda right Correct, now. for items 17 and 18. They for are both, both 17 both related. and that's my motion We're in with the attorneys. Uh, For both 17 and 18? Okay, we have a, do we have a second? Mayor Pro Tem Allman. May, I don't may have I a, a screen, but I'll, you know, my, my screen isn't here. But I'll go ahead and vote when I. I, I voted for <coughs> it. Did you? You're such a, yeah, I knew you'd take care of me. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that, we will go down to 19. We, uh, at pre uh, that, that item, item has been, been removed. Correct. Well, I'm getting good at this stuff. I'm half the round. Okay, with that, item 19 is removed. Would you, item 20, council reports, Mr. Cabriolis. I, I have nothing to report, just, just a comment, and, and uh, we, we listen to a lot of complaints, code enforcement, police, and, and we have a lot of programs out there that that we're doing against the Section 8 and, and the, the gangs and all the other things that we're doing. And most people in the city maybe are not completely aware of that. 
But I think I think what I would like to do is just to for all of us to so we can all understand and maybe maybe put the plan together because we have pieces here and there. Yeah. Maybe have a workshop with with our police department and and come together and develop a, a comprehensive strategy of how we're going to deal with this because we're dealing with it, but it's kind of you know a piecemeal in a lot of cases. But we need to come together and have one one plan that we can all agree to, and this is what we want to do. I know code enforcement. Uh, Sometimes they're wondering how, what are we, what priorities do we want? You know, so they're out there doing the best they can, but it may not be what this council wants as priority. So. Yeah. 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 Not realizing Section Eight is not a city issue. I mean, it's an issue yeah. We have a problem, but Section Eight is a county and federal issue that we don't have any jurisdiction over who goes in those homes. So, and we can yell as much as we want, but it falls on deaf ears. So. That's a good idea. I think it's a real good idea. And <clears throat> it really is. And I think maybe, I, I don't know if we've discussed it. Well, I'm sorry. I should go last. I'm mayor. No, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not Nothing. I, I was thinking that's a very good idea, Rudy. And not only that, maybe our code enforcement should be yes. proactive as opposed to being reactive. <laughs> And Mr. Webb is holding up his hands. Tell him where. I just, I just. So how many more do you have to hire now, Bill? <laughs> I, I, uh, I know that they do work very hard, but I've just had a few recently incidents to deal that I've dealt with code enforcement, and um, yeah, I think that would really help a lot of us. You know, that's an issue that you know we keep talking about, but we don't give that direction. And Me I too. agree with you. Code enforcement needs to be proactive. Years ago. Reactive was fine, not anymore. They've got to get out there and start writing those sites and taking care of issues and making sure it happens. Uh, there's there's a lot of messes out there that need to be cleaned up. Yeah. And if we need to take people to court, we need to take people to court I, I agree. and get it get it in paper and let them know we're serious about what we're doing. You know, that's I'll, that's I'll, yeah. the big issue, I think. All your um, your houses that are vacant out there, and uh, it's, you know, like the pictures we just seen with the doors open and just yeah. weeks from all over. I mean. Somebody should get out there, and and I know it takes staffing, but it, yep. but if, if we're going to do it, then we need to yep. say, yeah, we're we're going to provide the uh, yep. the assets or the support. I know we can't take a vote on it now, but yeah. everybody just shake their head and yep. we all no, agree. Give Mr. Demornowski more to do, but it's <laughs> <laughs> our time. Okay, now with this, we will be. Um, I just want to say thank you for putting up with my nonsense tonight. I was kind of. I'm under medication and it's feeling pretty good. <laughs> we will now be going into closed session. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I don't know if we're going to be coming out with anything, but if you'd like, to, like Mr. Paul will always says, hang around and wait until we come out. I will. May I, and uh, we will give you. May I approach him? Yes. Uh, it's, it's highly unusual, but we have a card from uh, one of the uh, people that's involved in the litigation, and uh, you, you're welcome to let them speak. It's from Ted Crocker. Uh, we certainly cannot let them into closed session to discuss the litigation, and I would recommend no comments based on the fact that we have litigation. But if you would like to give him his due process right and let him speak, that's your choice. Okay, and also, which, which also, litigation is this? Uh, it's okay. item number 23. And also, uh, there's no need to go in on item number 24. Okay. So if you. But we'll just take it like we do with public comment. You can give no, them three no minutes. Response. You can give three them three minutes, minutes if yeah. you want. Okay. Um, Mr. Ted Crocker? Maybe he's left. Gone. Okay. I think Mr. Crocker's gone. Gone. He left. Okay. He's had his opportunity. Okay. That takes care of the three minutes. If there's any reportable action, we'll come out and report it. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh. And we will see you. Eleven eighteen. Uh, as a result of the closed session, the City Council decided with respect to closed session item number 22 to agree to a settlement offer with the Malads. Uh, the settlement offer is for uh, parcel number APN 04602431. Settlement offer is for 59,450 an acre. Uh, only action taken. Meeting adjourned.